Hey guys, it's Agonis Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining today. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm going to be focusing on adding a new component to the new XR Interaction Toolkit that is going to allow us to interact with UI elements in augmented reality. This new component is going to be a new input module that needs to be added to the event system. I'm also going to show you some new components that need to be added to a canvas, such as a new graphics ray caster that needs to be added in order for you to interact with UI elements. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you the demo that I built to my device. So as you can see, I'm basically moving my phone around and doing plane detection, spawning game objects. And they have a canvas and also a button. So as I press the button, I show and hide the elements that is inside of the canvas. So this video is going to demonstrate how we can handle UI elements in AR with the new XR interaction toolkit. So the first thing that we're going to do is I don't want to change this scene right here. I'm going to be cloning the one that we have for annotations. And I'm going to call this one AR canvas interaction. Now let's go ahead and double click it. And there are a few things that we're going to need. The first thing that we need to add is going to be an event system. And the reason why we need an event system is because we need to replace the input module that comes with the default one, because we're going to need one for XR. So I'm going to go ahead and remove this one. So remove component, and we're going to be adding the XR UI input module. So this has few options that you can change. You can change the, the click speed, the move, dead zone, repeat delay, and then some other options that honestly I haven't really used. But all I know is we need to add this module in order to capture the inputs that we're doing with our fingers in AR. So that's going to be the first thing. The, the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to go into my prefabs and let's click on these and clone it. I'm going to do a new one with Canvas. So the one that it's annotation was for the previous video. So this one is going to change just a little bit. And I'm going to enable the annotations here because now this is going to be for the canvas. So instead of using the title and the subtitle like I have here, I'm going to remove those two components. And this one, I'm just going to call it AR Canvas. It doesn't really matter what we call it. All it needs to mean something to us. And then we're going to need to add a new UI component, which is going to be of type Canvas. And one of the things that I require is that you make the canvas in a different render mode. So the render mode is going to be in world space. So that's going to be the first thing that you need to do. Then the next thing that you need to do is we're going to have to add a new component. So this new component, it's going to be called, let me go ahead and find it. It's going to be the track device graphic ray caster. So make sure that you add that. And, and you also have a blocking mask. You can set it to, you know, to everything. Of course, that's not really recommended, but it's going to have default or which, you know, whichever you want to do a collision on. I'm going to leave default the way the, the way that it is. And then this is also going to allow you to, whether you want to check for 2D occlusion or 3D occlusion. So if we look at the code for that very quick, what Unity is doing is allowing us to use basically Raycast hit data either for a 3D element or a 2D element. So if we look at the the enable, so if you look at the 3D occlusion, they're just using the physics Raycast non-alloc and then passing a blocking mask with the 3D occlusion hit. So if you look at the 3D occlusion hit, and I don't want to get too deep into this because this is Unity code and you know things should just work and sometimes they don't, but <laughs> That's why I'm looking at this. So they're using a Raycast hit and also for 3D and also one for 2D. So all you need to know is that you can use either the 2D one or the 3D one. I'm just going to enable both because that's how I got it working. I don't think I might need both, but just for the sake of this demo, we can just enable them. And then the next thing that I'm going to need is I want to display basically what I had on the video. I had a details button and also a little bit of information on the, on the details. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a new component. This one is going to be under UI and I'm just going to add a button and it's going to be giant, right? And that the reason for that is because the size of the canvas is very big. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to delete this and we need to resize our canvas. So the reason why we need to resize our canvas is because the canvas is, you know, giant. And the way that I normally do it, I'm going to make it about, because we're dealing with meters, remember? So I'm going to do 0.2 on the width and height for the canvas. Then I'm pressing the F key to get close to the, to the object. Let's go ahead and make sure that we're close to the object. And then I'm also going to be offsetting, changing the offset here to zero, zero. 
and also the c-axis let's go ahead and change it to zero so let's see where the canvas is landing so you can see the, the canvas is a little bit offset and that's okay we can just move it we can just move it up and that's what i'm gonna do let's go ahead and go into 2d and i think i'm gonna put it right about i can just center it and right about there i think it's a little bit too small so i'm going to resize the width i think that and then the height maybe do it about 0.3 it's really hard when you're dealing with really little little numbers okay so i'm just going to resize it here and then maybe the width let's do 0.4 okay so i think that matches the demo that i just showed you so the next thing that we're going to need for this is we're going to need also a banging that's going to be the bound that we that we looked at in the demo and for this i what i did is i actually resized this as well so i think i used 0.1 and 0.1 and you might look at this and you, you're like, oh yeah, that doesn't look like a button. And yeah, it doesn't look like a button because it's using the sprite. And I'm not gonna be using the sprite because we're using, and you can use, you can create your own custom, you know, a sprite for this. This is just a built-in and it doesn't look good at all. So I'm just gonna remove the source image. And now we're gonna have something that looks like a button. Of course, we can create a texture that makes it look better, but I think this works for the demo. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm not going to use the built-in text because the built-in text doesn't look okay. We're going to use TextMesh Pro text because that resizes perfectly. And I'm going to go down here to look at the text TextMesh Pro. And the size is going to be also giant. So I know that we need to go down to something like 0.2. And we can go out and see where we... We also need to resize this, right? Because it's, it's giant right now. So I'm going to go ahead and do one and one. And then also change the, oh, it looks like we're at zero, zero. So I think that that's perfect. So you can see that we now can see our, our text, but it's still giant. So we need to make it a little smaller. Let's go ahead and do 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And then we also need to go down in our text size. So I think something like 0 0.09 would work. And then I'm going to just go ahead and center it. I'm also going to change the color to be something like black. I think it's fine and then we can resize this again and then I'm just going to change the value of Y so that we can center the text so let me change the color a little bit let's do something like that so this one is going to be the details that I show you in the demo and the next thing that we need to do so this should work the way that we have it I'm going to just change this to text the button now is we need to do one more thing on the button because right now it's not doing, you know, it's not doing anything, right? We need to actually call an action. And that action, it's going to be a script that I have here. I'm gonna show you that script, it's super simple. All, it all it's taking is the text that I just added, which I call it, which is uh, it's actually gonna be called details. And the text that I just added, it's for the button. We need to add a new one for the details. So I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna just create a new, basically copy the details text that I added and then call this one details. And this is going to be the details that I show you on the video. And I'm just going to move it down. And this one I'm going to make white because it's going to be really hard to see otherwise. And then the size is going to be, let's go ahead and make it something like 0 0.02 works. And then we can just say this is a, this is a test. And then I'm just going to copy, it's going to copy that multiple times. And I think that, let me just go ahead and do it one more time until we have a little more text and and that works okay so i'm going to resize it just a little bit and then we're going to also resize the text what about two five okay perfect we just need something to you know to do an example on and that that works so the next thing that i'm going to do is i have the script that i show you here that takes the details the details going to be that text that i'm showing in here so i'm going to go into my canvas i'm going to add a new component and that component is going to be just that script and that script is going to be taking the details. So let me just show you that very quick again. So we're gonna be taking in the details, which is the text that I just added, and this just has a toggle. So what it's gonna do is gonna say, okay, I'm going to be toggling the, basically that game object every time I call this method. So I'm doing a not, so if this is true, it's gonna be false. If this is false, it's gonna be true. And then that way we can show and hide those components. So now if we go back, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have. 
uh, until this compiles. So now if we go ahead and look at the, you know, the 3D view and see that that shows in there. The other thing that you want to make sure that you do is you want to make sure that this is disabled. Otherwise, it's not going to show, it's not, it's going to show on, you know, as soon as you place that object on the plane. We don't want to show it right away. We only want to show it when we're selecting the object and that's the way that it should be, at least for this experience. If you want to show it at the beginning, you can, you know, you can enable that if you like. And then the last thing that we need to make sure that we have selected, if you look at the the root object, it has an AR annotation interactable. So based on the previous video, this is going to work the same way. We're going to make sure that we have this added and we do have it added because we cloned that object from another one that we used previously. And then make sure that you have this setting set up the way that I have it. So make sure that you watch the previous video because that previous video is basically, this video is building up on that other video. So now if we go back in here, now that we have the new, the new scene, we need to go into the AR placement interactable and we need to add our new prefab. That's right now it's using the annotation one. And I'm going to make sure that I have that one added. The last thing we need to go to is we're going to go into build settings and I need to add this scene to be the one that I built. And then all you have to do is basically just build it and then run it on your device and it should look like the one that I show you in the beginning of the video. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know. All right, guys, thank you much for watching this video today. If you guys have any questions or anything that I just show you, please let me know in the comments. Also, make sure to check out gamedev.net because they have great resources for game developers. And also find me in patreon.com where I'm basically posting what I'm doing behind the scenes and also early access source code. Thank you very much, guys.